Oke. Halo. Baru. Hmm, oke aja. Oh, kan
good evening to all of you we are going to start the webinar and puducherry uh, climate change cell of the department of science technology and environment is conducting uh, various seminars and this is the 14th webinar of its kind and it has been arranged on integrating sdgs in the development planning of the ut of puducherry so uh, happy evening to each and every one of you who have joined here and it's a great pleasure to welcome each and every one of you for this webinar it's my honor in welcoming our secretary com director madam smita ayers madam for your gracious presence for the for the webinar and also madam is going to deliver the keynote address i, I also take the pleasure in welcoming the today's speaker dr shaili kedia senior fellow and associate director from the sustainable development and outreach division of the energy resources institute new delhi ma'am thank you for accepting our invitation immediately and being with us for the today's webinar thank you and also i welcome all the officials from various government departments and agencies from puducherry and also the officials and staff of the department of science technology and environment puducherry climate change cell puducherry pollution control committee puducherry council for science and technology who have joined in this today's webinar certainly this webinar is going to throw more light on the sustainable development goals with the, to make the vision and mission of puducherry in the planning and policy making and i would one once again i welcome each and every one of you thank you now i welcome our secretary com director madam smita ias madam for your keynote address please thank you so much uh, it is my pleasure to be here uh, in this webinar on sustainable development goals which have become a very important word in uh, all planning and administrative perspectives after niti aayog has given it a lot of importance uh, in its dashboard and uh, the state ut government also is uh, putting particular focus on the sustainable development goals the sdgs were set up in 2015 by the united nations general assembly and are intended to be achieved by 2030 by all the nations these goals have mainstream environment in the planning and policy making of almost all the sectors of the nation with dedicated goals of climate action life on land life below water affordable and clean energy clean water and sanitation sustainable cities and communities etc india india meaning all the states and union territories are working towards achieving the targets of the sdgs and adopted sdgs are the guiding framework for steering development action at national and subnational level in everywhere in fact it is to be noted that actions of sustainable development goals are presently being localized to the district level also the niti aayog has developed the sdg india index and dashboard to monitor the performances of all the states and the union territories in achieving sdg goals and targets which is evaluated through the national indicator framework and today speaker will be giving a more thorough and detailed review of how these sdg goals can be um, combined together with the planning and development goals of the ut of puducherry as per the sdg india index 2020 puducherry has 12th position among the states and ut's and second position among the ut's with overall sdg score of 68 UT of Puducherry is the top performer among all states and UTs in the SDG goal 16 that is peace and justice. Puducherry is also a front runner in SDG 6 that is clean water and sanitation and SDG 7 affordable and clean energy. But still we have um, uh, many steps to many uh, steps to go and uh, we have to come to the forefront of these development goals also and that is also the intention of today's webinar. because uh, in order to come forth we have to align our developmental policies and plan with the sdg goals and targets to improve our performance and become the top performer in all the sdgs i would also like to mention uh, in fact i appreciate the climate change, uh, change cell uh, of the department in organizing this webinar 
because this is a need of the hour when we are concentrating on sdgs and we have to be aware of uh, the goals as well as how to go go forward in this uh, achieving the target so it is a very appreciable effort that the climate change cell has taken today the department of science and technology is also revising the state action plan on climate change for the ut in line with the sustainable development goals and the intended nationally determined contributors contributions of india this makes the sdgs a priority topic to think about in the present times thus it is the right time that this webinar on integrating sdgs in the development planning of puducherry is organized by the pondicherry puducherry climate change cell uh, I, i welcome and thank dr shaili kedia senior fellow and associate director sustainable development and outreach division of cherry new delhi for uh, delivering this lecture and being part of this webinar i hope that this webinar would be helpful to all the participants uh, in understanding and uh, um, building up their knowledge and their capacity to work on formulating and implementing policies and activities that would help improve the performance of union territory with respect to sdgs i believe that this webinar will help all the stakeholders especially government officials in brainstorming and strategizing sectoral policies and action plans in streamlining the implementation of the state action plan on climate change thank you Uh, thank you madam uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker uh, to the participants uh, dr shaili kedia is an associate director and senior fellow with the sustainable development and outreach division at uh, the tata at the energy and resource institute terry new delhi dr kedia is a bachelor of engineering uh, from the national institute of technology surat and masters of business administration from the university of stirling scotland She has a doctoral degree in international organization from the School of International Studies, JNU New Delhi. Dr. Kedia has over 17 years of experience in policy research, outreach, and capacity building. Presently, she is leading the efforts on Terry's flagship initiative, the World Sustainable Development Summit. She has led interdisciplinary initiatives on sustainable development and climate change support by agencies such as ADB, UNDP. UNEP Global Green Growth Institute Ministry of External Affairs Ministry of Environment Forest and Climate Change among others her research interests include sustainable development policy climate policy energy policy environmental policy green growth international organizations and the interface between traditional and non traditional security issues dr kedia is a board member of world sustainable development forum and she has also been member of the task force on greening rural development of the ministry of rural development and co-chair of the green growth knowledge platform research committee on inclusiveness uh we welcome you madam to give the presentation thank you so much uh, i would like to thank the organizers um the puducherry uh, climate change cell the department of science technology and environment government of the union territory of puducherry thank you so much for inviting me to share my perspectives on this uh, very important topic of integrating sdgs in development planning and uh, um, i would uh, like to outset you know congratulate uh, this initiative uh, this webinar series and i'm sure that you know uh, this will help in bringing a lot of diverse perspectives uh, to inform various aspects of sustainable development and climate action and uh, congratulations to you again and thank you so much for inviting me i would like to present my screen now i have a presentation uh, i would just request one of the organizers to kindly confirm if you can um, uh, see my screen in full screen mode is this visible No, it's not visible. We can see your uh, screen only. Your okay, just camera. Let me, sorry. <laughs> let me just uh, try. Sorry. Um, just hello. Is this is is this visible? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. And it's visible in full screen, right? Just wanted to confirm. Yes. Yes. Please okay. Yes. Thank you so much uh, for confirming that. and uh, as you all know that the title of uh, this webinar um, and this uh, topic which i've been given to share my perspectives on is integrating sdgs in development planning of ut of puducherry 
in terms of the content of this talk uh, firstly we just like to i'd like to briefly touch on the rational as to why we are even talking about sustainable development a brief um, overview of sustainable development and uh, integrating sustainable development goals uh, here i'll talk about the concept but also what is integration types of integration and why is it important and uh, then uh, more time i'll be spending on implications for development planning and here i'll be taking two examples one is a reporting on sdgs and implications for department because this is a very important part of of integration of um, sdgs into development planning the second example i'll be taking is integrating of sdgs in financial planning and here i'll be taking the example of green budgeting now this is one concrete example where in a type of economic development policy sdgs can be uh, integrated and can help in informing uh, development policies and then finally i'll go to ways forward for puducherry i'd also also like to just put a disclaimer uh, is that like Uh, certainly i have not done put, uh, uh, specific research on puducherry uh, ut but you know of course we as an organization terry uh, we are working with the uh, um, uh, with the uh, uh, the union territory government uh, on uh, on uh, the on climate change aspects but we'd also be happy to take forward a larger agenda on sdgs uh, in future so in terms of rational as to why are we discussing about sustainable development now this whole uh, whole reason of um, developing sustainable development comes from multiple drivers there are multiple drivers even if we see today in present context there are multiple drivers we all know and the cell uh, of course is uh, has done a lot of work on this aspect climate change but then also um, at a larger even macro and global scale biodiversity loss is a huge issue and so is land degradation uh, currently with the russia ukraine conflict we are also looking at again the interface between traditional security and non traditional security the conflict uh, between russia and ukraine is not just threatening traditional peace security or a peace or uh, that is sdg 16 but is also threatening aspects related to food security as well as energy security for example sdg 7 and so there is a interface and again uh, that's why um, uh, also sustainable development has this dimension of global and as to what is also happening around the world and indeed this whole concept took off um, you know uh, uh, at the global level but again it's a multi uh, it's it's a concept that's deliberated at a multi scale level and of course equity is very part the prevailing inequity whether we talk about equity between uh, the current generation between different regions the inequity that is there it's 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 one of the driving factor but also between generations you know how much our future generations will be left uh now coming to puducherry and uh, sdgs uh this is again very quickly from the niti uh, niti ayog sdg uh, index and just just highlighting some of the indicators and i'm sure you're aware of course you know puducherry and this is again um, uh, these targets that are uh, as you can see in this table uh there is a goal target the specific indicators the the performance of puducherry uh and uh, then india and the target that is set now again this is something to be critically examined i'm not propagating that this is the right or this is the only approach of course this can be further strengthened but then just wanted to highlight that the the, the sort of red or the pink cells that you can see uh those are cells where uh, you know at the moment uh, india mostly as and puducherry also and like is are the other states uh, they are away from the target for example percentage of industries complying with pollution control norm uh, i mean india is at 88% uh, puducherry is doing much better than india which is 95% but the target is 100% but then there are other areas also so most of the uh, cells as you can see are red that means uh, while as compared to other states in union territories puducherry has made progress but then it still has to work towards achieving the target and again this target itself is kind of something that can be critically discussed on but we'll come to that part later so but what one can see where there are there are areas the critical areas for example uh, if we were to look in sdg 6 uh, uh, percentage of blocks and mandals and taluka that are over exploited uh, actually in puducherry is uh, 25 uh, which is higher than the india average and the target is to get zero so this is one of the crucial issue one can just get from that picture 
even on the waste management indicators uh, again like um, you know something you know which uh, can be improved on so so again as is the case with other union territories and, and uh, states as well as the national level a lot of the environment related sdgs you know in a way they are actually far from the actual target and of course not to say that this is to be achieved right now this most of these targets you know you have to work towards in the time frame of 2030 and uh, so but we are already in the last in the in the decade you know which 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 is leading to 2030 so that's a bit, this is we're in a very crucial moment so what is integrating sdgs into development uh, planning so uh, so integration of sdg involves formulating coordinating and blending sdgs to inf inform various aspects of development plan it can be macro it can be sectoral it can even be in, at you know specific scheme level as well as it can be cross cutting cutting for example gender can be cross cutting across sectors also uh, why why are we talking about integrating it is emphasized that integrating environment and sdgs into decision making will contribute to improving the ways the way government allocates resources and to strengthening interdepartmental planning processes which will enable them to effectively respond to environmental issues in the short medium and long term again what are the types of uh, integration so integration actually has two types as is broadly understood one is uh, vertical integration and the other is horizontal integration as the terminology suggests vertical integration uh, basically means you know when frameworks uh, you know kind of come from uh, so it's not necessarily all top down it's also bottom up but the essential uh, element is the interaction take place takes place between the vertical level so for example if sdgs is an agenda that is set at the global level at the un by of course member states uh, across the world now uh, you say that as a global agenda that then percolates to country and that then percolates to states and union territory so that's a example of vertical integration and we are already seeing that sdgs is being vertically integrated now where the crucial aspect and the missing aspect and this again horizontal integration means where different departments across at the same level of governance there is integration across that so for example uh, you know uh, at at uh, for for for, uh, for for a state or a union territory if you're talking about climate change or if you're talking about sustainable development one aspect we know that the department of science technology environment will perhaps have a cell you know and and you know they will work on it but the important thing is how much the other departments are being informed by frameworks related to sustainable development within the territory uh, within the union territory uh, governance level or within the national territory uh, national level governance level or even at the global level so what in general we have seen so far in terms of the progress the integration part since here we are also talking about the integration part has been relatively you know there are lots of mechanisms and at least there is lots of deliberations for vertical integration and uh, as was mentioned by the honorable secretary in the beginning uh, you know that niti ayog has set a mandate for states and union territories uh, which in turn derives its you know inspiration from global framework so there that's a form of in vertical integration now horizontal integration is where the major gap is there and this is not just at the state and union territory level but also at the national level also to some extent at the global level so this is where this is a area where we need to work on strongly now sustainable development evolution and concept again very briefly now uh, uh, again i'll be you know i'll be sharing this presentation and you know please feel free to circulate to uh, uh, to uh, to participants and uh, colleagues who might would be interested but in general what we say is that you know uh, the you know while sustainable development uh, has its or in the whole term concept of sustainable and as well as development if you just break it into concept two two uh, separate words uh, it has its origin in the na natural sciences but in the natural sciences it is very clear there is no contention you know it's clear but when it comes to development or development planning the, it can have a lot of interpretation that is why there is need for clarity there is need for in, you know indicators there is need for reporting frameworks and there is need 
to clearly kind of have a mechanism and methodology to integrate it in various aspects of development planning. This is just general sustainable development timeline. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but this whole discussion started in 1972 with the Stockholm conference. And this year, incidentally, we've celebrated 50 years of that. Uh, and what is sustainable development? Again, very, very briefly, um, you know, the, the most accepted definition is the Brundtland Commission report. But before that, also in 1982, the World uh, Charter of Nature also uh, integrated sustainable development uh, in terms of uh, like in a way the, the kind of concepts which we understand today as carrying capacity it hinted towards that and the world commission on environment and development or the Brundtland commission uh, it articulated sustainable development as uh, development that meets the needs of present generations without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs so again it's talking about both present and future generation so the needs aspect is important but so is the aspect of limitations so while technology can help in advance and address many of these limitations, but then also considering the nature of environment to some extent, there are also limits. And the idea of equity is absolutely central to uh, sustainable development. Now, very quickly, so what is sustainable development in practice? It can mean, uh, you know, generally political stewardship, government initiatives, schemes, you know, development planning processes. Uh, again, um, um, you know, businesses can strive to do sustainable development. It can be applied in design, for example, in buildings, uh, in standards, for example, equal labels or corporate responsibility, even audits, as a matter of fact, and day to day life as an individual, as you know, as a consumer. But what is important about sustainable development it is always context specific. There is no straitjacket approach, if that will be too reductionist. It has a spatial dimension to it. It has a temporal dimension to it, also socioeconomic context, as well as sectoral context. Now, in the Indian context, um, uh, the seventh five-year plan, which which covered the period of 1985, actually before the Brundtland Commission also articulated sustainable development. Of course, we have the Constitution of India, Article 21, the Directive Principles, Fundamental Duties. And then we have National Environment Policy of 2006, which articulates that only such development is sustainable, which respects ecological constraints and imperative of social justice. Now, coming quickly to the sustainable development goals, we know that sustainable development goals is a part of the 2030 agenda, uh, and uh, which in a way it builds upon the Millennium Development Goals, uh, which, um, uh, which, which largely contain social goals, uh, but then again, SDGs has uh, a larger coverage of goals and, and uh, uh, the other distinguishing factor of SDGs is that while for Millennium Development Goals uh, uh, didn't involve an intergovernmental detailed negotiating process, SDGs did. The uh, other aspect is that it is it it mostly it's it's not uh, MDGs were largely to track development in developing countries, but but SDGs tracks in both developed and developing countries. So uh, again, uh, there are 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, which has 169 targets, 231 indicators. Uh, and this is, of course, just quickly to give you a snapshot, pictorial snapshot, snapshot. I'm sure you're familiar with this image, and I'm sure you have worked with it. But uh, just a few, like, you know, in some of the other talks, uh, uh, you know, some of the participants just said, how do you remember this, you know? So it's very, very easy uh, to remember it. And this is just a, like, quick thing, you know, um, to show how to remember it. So the first six goals, poverty, hunger, health, education, gender equality, you know, are largely social goals, clean water and sanitation. So, you know, uh, SDGs have that 5P framework. So people, so first P is people. Then you have energy, jobs, in innovation, inequalities, cities, responsible consumption, largely related to economic goals or prosperity, the second P. 13, 14, 50 are, meaning they lean more towards the environment, obviously. These are the core environment goals, but that doesn't mean that SDG 7 is not an uh, important environment goal, 12 is not, 11 is not. Actually, environment is pretty cross-cutting if you actually go to the target and indicator level. And uh, the fourth P is, uh, so, so environment is planet. The fourth P is peace, where... Uh, as uh, the Honorable Secretary highlighted that, you know, uh, Puducherry is um, is doing very well. And then the last 17 is partnership. So this is just a quick way of remembering it. The first six is people, then the next six is prosperity, planet, peace, and partnerships. So coming to the core, 
of the talk, which is implications for development planning and how do we sort of integrate. So the first part, this is one, the first of the second, uh, two, uh, two, two examples that I'll be covering. Uh, and the first one is reporting on SDGs and implications of department. Now, this is core because one is that, you know, um, you, you know, if you are planning to integrate SDGs in development planning and there is no way where you're framing it, you're measuring it, you can't improve it, you can't integrate SDGs in planning. And similarly, if, if you can't improve the ways to measure it, you know, I mean, you know, you just can't, um, you know, you have to do it. It's, it's like both vice versa. So you have to measure it to improve the improve the planning processes and the planning process itself have to be improved so that you can enable better monitoring and reporting systems. So very quickly, again, um, this, uh, I, I, I understand from the uh, government uh, website and documents that I've been able to access that, um, that Puducherry has, uh, has done in mapping of departments and schemes. Also, it has uh, it has given a time frame of potential uh, targets as well as uh, some uh, sort of Puducherry specific indicator frameworks for the indi indicator framework for the states. But again, indicators are an essential component of not just I would say a monitoring and evaluation system, but for any planning system. And indicators provide uh, technical experts as well as decision makers with the data to. Uh, effectively manage a policy response or even plan a policy. And there are different types of indicators, input indicators, output indicators, outcome indicators, as well as final impact indicators. Now, indicator frameworks for SDGs, we, we already know that, <clears throat> that uh, uh, this is um, the, the global indicator frameworks uh, framework was adopted at the UN level. And uh, in India, we have Niti Ayo. Um, and uh, Niti Ayog is also, you know, uh, uh, is also um, Niti Ayog along with uh, the National Indicator Framework, which is, uh, uh, which is, which gets the technical inputs mostly from the Ministry of Statistics Planning and uh, uh, Ministry of Statistics and Program uh, Implementation or MOSP is expected to be the backbone of monitoring SDGs at the national level. I would also say that, you know, for, for Niti Ayog SDG index, uh, a lot of the indicators are uh, I mean, are getting inclined with the national indicator framework. But of course, uh, there are few changes because again, for NITI, they have to also report at the state level, unlike uh, the national indicator framework, where also there is effort that's ongoing to report at the state level, but largely the mandate as, as is the experience with other countries is to report at the national level. And the governments uh, are also encouraged to develop uh, something called as the SIF, like the state indicator framework. And of course, uh, this cell, at least the climate change cell is very familiar, similar to the process that, you know, at one stage you had the NAPCC or the National Action Plan on Climate Change. And then the states followed with the SAPCC uh, or the State Action Plan on Climate Change. Similar to that, you have the national indicator framework and the state indicator frameworks. Of course, one has to say that most of the states and union territories have still not developed a full full uh, complete state indicator framework. They're mostly in a process of tabulation and identifying indicators, but again, not at a broad strategic level uh, sort of document and so that they can also report at the district level. So this is uh, there in, in terms of the policy mandate, but also indicator framework, just wanted to say that, you know, that uh, most of the indicator framework, there's this framework called SMART, wherein each indicator is to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. And uh, another important consideration, and especially for areas which are uh, relatively new, especially in the environment domain, this whole policy cycle approach is important because there are a lot of issue areas where, uh, where still I mean, at this stage, um, you know, it is at an agenda setting stage. The, the policy framework, a dedicated policy framework is still not there. Uh, it still needs regulatory support. Um, it needs financial support for implementation uh, and there is also the need for monitoring and evaluation at various levels. And again, like I'm saying that here, you know, it's not to be seen in terms of binaries or like, you know, uh, that, you know, uh, they're all important global level, national level, state level and local level are all important. And there is a need for vertical integration and constant interaction, you know, between all the levels. Again, uh, key considerations for indicator framework, especially when it comes to SDGs, is there has to be a match between target and indicators. 
in the initial stages even for the global indicator framework one felt that the target was calling uh, for or even presently if the target is following for uh, calling for more uh, is calling for uh, businesses to um, uh, to uh, to kind of have more sustainable strategies policies and actions uh, along with reporting you know so the target if that's the target and if the indicator is only on reporting that's not sufficient so there has to be concrete target uh, you know there has to be concrete action also so that's just to kind of give you one example and again to also understand that global indicator framework national indicator framework are meant for different purposes so global indicator framework is more for monitoring global progress and national indicator framework is for monitoring national and sub national and at the state level that's for monitoring at the district level so also you know uh, the other third part and you know because uh, this is just coming from uh, some of the experience because we work with mospi on uh, especially mospi uh, and also neeti on 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 sdgs is that often these indicator frameworks are also uh, you know have to consider the practicality especially data considerations so uh, so but at the same time it's not to say that you have to stop at that eventually you'll have to develop data collection systems also now this is not going to be an immediate exercise uh, and this is not the case just with with uh, with you know states in india or india or asia or even th this this is a constant evolution uh, process that's taking place at all levels so just is just to give an example because we don't have time to cover all the goal by goal and of course that each one could have like a separate you know in fact you could sit and deliberate on one goal for an entire day and you'll still be falling short but just as an illustration uh, to just see like you know just see the smart framework and some of the key considerations so if you look at goal 15 which is basically on protect restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems uh, sustainably manage forests combat desertification and halt and reverse land degradation so again like you know it has a lot of elements and the goals are generally meant to like you know and because these are all negotiated goals so every country has put in place what is of interest to them but as you can see that uh, that you know it has a lot of elements and goal 15 itself has 12 targets and 17 indicators um and uh, so these are just the 12 targets of goal uh, goal 15 and uh, just to take an example of one target if you look at it so target 15.1 by 2020 ensure the conservation restoration and sustainable use so it has conservation so you conserve it as it is you restore and sustainable use of terrestrial and inland freshwater ecosystem so now this is more around inland freshwater ecosystems com comes under target uh, 15 uh, sorry goal 15 and the marine uh, you know uh, marine or uh, marine uh, water ecosystem uh, marine uh, marine uh, ecosystems come under uh, goal number 14 and so this target 15.1 is basically for terrestrial and inland freshwater ecosystem in particular forests but wetlands are also there mountains are also there drylands are also there of course depending on the type of geography you can't expect to find all of these in uh, in a in a same uh, in in one geography in line with the uh, obligations under international agreements so here the global indicator framework is forest area as a proportion of total land and uh, again now here there's a big problem can uh, you know um, i know that there is some time for discussion later on but if you see right in the beginning of the target it is by 2020 we are already in 2022 so uh, so of course the time boundness here is self is like a question mark that you know it's uh, just something that um, you know the tar the tar at the target level the timeline is uh, something which is not matching for example with the national indicators which is largely going by the 2030 time frame and which it should go because it is a 2030 by when you know is is a global time frame so the global indicator frameworks are forest area as a proportion of total land area and then the second one is pro proportion of important sites for both terrestrial and freshwater biodiversity that are covered by for protected areas by ecosystem types and in uh, the national indicator framework developed by mospi we have forest cover as a percentage of total geographic area protected area as a percentage of total geographic area and area of ramsar sites you know as a percentage of total wetland area so this is what it is um, again i'm not going to go but this is just the data 
as you see the 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 um, the global indicators then you have the national indicators this is this is something which is uh, very familiar to all of you it's from the forest survey of india but we essentially have sourced it from mospi and uh, of course mospi the data was not was till 2019 we had the latest uh, FSI report, which basically um, says that in 2021, we have 21.71 percent of forest cover at the national level. And then you have the protected area as a percentage of total geographic area and area of Ramsar sites as a percentage of total wetland area. Now, again, like before we come to Puducherry, which I'll come later, uh, but as a discussion, if you see uh, in terms of just a general like critical uh, an, uh, you know, analysis, you see, like most of this, uh, these indicators here, if I just were to go to this slide, uh, these are all kind of outcome indicators, you know, uh, uh, outcome uh, to some extent impact indicators. And of course, like, you know, uh, output indicators would be scheme specific indicators. Uh, input indicators could be how much financial resources are allocated, for example, for a particular scheme that contributes to that particular target. So again, like, uh, of course, uh, to say that, like, uh, the national indicator framework and the global indicator so far have been mostly, mostly, you know, outcome oriented, outcome indicators. Uh, I feel that, you know, when you're talking about integrating of SDGs in development planning, there is also need for input and output indicators. By that, by that we just mean physical indicators. Okay, so like for example, uh, number of trees planted, you know, and uh, number of areas covered covered under tree plantation, uh, plantation. Uh, so things like that. Uh, but also specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. That's kind of uh, important. Coming to uh, again a discussion uh, on that as well. So well, we know that uh, for the forest cover, uh, generally India has set a target of bringing 33% of geographical area under the forest cover as is, as is envisaged in the 1988 National Forest Policy. Similarly, uh, as uh, this rationale was given by Niti Aayog on the National Aforestation and Eco-Development Board, that that also aims to achieve 33% of the geographic area in the country under forest and tree cover. Now, what is missing here, if you were to go in terms of the smart indicator, is a time boundness. Now, of course, for us, we know SDGs in general are time bound because whatever we are talking about is we're talking about like, you know, in a time frame of the longest time frame of 2030. And of course, you were, uh, uh, you know, Niti Ayub did ask states and union territories. And I did see the document by Puducherry, which gives the um, gives the uh, gives a time frame of three years, seven years and then like till 2030. So that is also there. But again, like that disaggregation is not available in a macro policy document yet. So that's just one thing. And another thing which sometimes could be uh, like, you know, different states and union territories, geographies may have a different uh, take on it is that for some of the indices covered in the NITI SDG index, uh, they use the average of three best performing states. For example, like afforestation is what they kind of use for the three best performing states. Now here again, it's all very context specific because uh, one can't expect a state with less potential for afforestation, but with larger potential for, let's say, you know, mountain, um, you know, mountain ecosystem preservation or dryland ecosystem preservation to be, to have the target that matches to this. So this is kind of a problematic area. But again, that is the reason why having a state indicator framework, you know, uh, for states and union territories become very important because so that they can set their own benchmark and targets. So also there are missing uh, quantified targets specifically when it comes to baseline and time frames. Time frames is like kind of what is important. And when we talk about integrating into SDGs into development planning, input indicators also become very important. Now coming to the second example, uh, which is integrating into financial planning. This is one, one example. Now finance is something that you need for any kind of implementation and then through the implementation achieving the uh, targets and then through the targets achieving the goals. Now, just give an example of green budgeting because this is an area where we see there's a lot of potential uh, and we think it's important. Uh, uh, Terry has done a few projects uh, on that uh, and thinking on it. Uh, so just wanted to share some uh, perspectives on that. So green budgeting, why it is important when you are talking about SDG integration into development planning. See, firstly, the 
thing is very clear that the locus tendai, if you just talk about individual departments, individual ministry is weak with regard to SDGs, as budgetary allocation is limited. Also, there are many areas where there is cross-cutting aspect to it. So, so the thing is, it's essential that SDGs is mainstream or integrated across different agencies, you know, whether it's ministries at the national level, departments and sectors. Uh, another thing for green budgeting is it's, it's a practical proposition, you know, I mean, it's a practical proposition because there are other issue based budgeting processes already in place, whether it's gender budgeting, some states uh, do also child budgeting. And uh, uh, the same is the case that for every year, the union budget also has a dedicated gender budget statement and a child budget statement. So just, you know, on lines of those. Uh, you know, we formulated a working definition for green budgeting, wherein every year government agencies through annual budget circular prepare green budget statements to specify line items involving environmental sustainability initiative and where possible estimate the quantum of public expenditure in the state or even union territory budget that address environmental sustainability initiative and eventually reduce expenditure in the unsustainable sector. So, of course, the reducing part is something which is long term, uh, but again, something that can be looked into. And what are the six pillars of green budgeting? The mainstreaming, integrating part is important. Uh, again, because budget is a process which involves all departments. And it's it's like, you know, uh, all departments will, you know, have to participate in a budget process because if they have to make demand for grants, etc. So, again, it's a process which has a high potential for, uh, you know, uh, if, we, if we design the right type of process for mainstreaming, uh, mainstreaming of SDGs across the board, uh, at least when we are talking at the government or the departmental level. Resource allocation, so that we have larger, the proper resource allocation for SDG implementation, planning and coordination, you know, wherever there are areas of convergence, you know, uh, and uh, bet for better coordination, evaluation, monitoring, reporting, as well as transparency and accountability as well as to send the right policy signals, because it's not just that at the government level that, uh, that you know, uh, change is needed for or integration of SDGs is needed, but also in the private uh, sector. Uh, the methodology which we developed for green budgeting, and we carried out this exercise for Punjab uh, and also for Bihar. Uh, so, um, but of course, Bihar was the only one that actually uh, implemented green budgeting, and we'll come a little bit more to that uh, later on. But firstly, you have to engage with the stakeholders, which of course includes firstly the Department of uh, Science, Technology, Environment, or Department of Environment in certain states. But most importantly, also because the you know initial bit of coordination and circular has to be sent by the finance uh, department, as is the case uh, for gender budgeting or even at the national budget national uh, level. Uh, so it's very important to get the finance department also on board. So that is key. In fact, like you know, whichever department. Uh, when we're talking even about SDG integration, though, you know, the first step itself is to get the relevant stakeholders, the relevant departments on board. They have to be interested in doing that. And so is that also the case for green budgeting. Uh, so we also finalize the pro forma and categories for green budgeting. Uh, and we gave this pro forma to different departments and they reported on it. And uh, then, um, of course, the initial stage is not that uh, for the finance department also, like the way we went about it in Bihar, it's not that every department gave thing because they wanted some time, some time to plan out initiatives, but there were few departments that, that you know, had a very clear role in terms of, you know, green budgeting. So uh, then once they give the inputs, it can be collected and collated. And uh, here we also had different categories of, uh, we, we had six categories following a Rio marker methodology for uh, Bihar. And we also did tagging for SDGs, for types of activities, for themes, etc. And then you finally prepare the green budget statement. And it's not that it just becomes an independent document. In case of Bihar, they took full, the finance department took full ownership, of course, in consultation with other departments. And uh, then it was also tabled in the state legislative assembly. For it. And, it, and they've been doing this for two consecutive years. So just to give you a snapshot of uh, green budget of Bihar, uh, so here, as you can see, like, uh, um, and I just, this is on the left side, the graph that you see is the SDG footprint of Bihar's green budget. And that shows basically these are the schemes which fall under the category of different SDGs. As you can see, the largest footprint in Bihar is for, 
is expected for SDG 2, agriculture related, sustainable agriculture uh, related interventions for SDG 15, which is, uh, you know, forest, afforestation related issues, climate change, SDG 13. And uh, then uh, also for SDG 6, uh, because there's also a lot on groundwater and water management in SDG 6, apart from the sanitation part of things, the social dimension part of things, there's a fair amount of environmental aspects and also SDG uh, 11. So, uh, which is on cities, essentially. So, uh, so again, like we feel that, of course, considering the larger mandate around waste management, the different waste streams, SDG 12 can certainly be strengthened much more. And uh, also, um, also, um, you know, there's also a lot of scope for SDG 7, the energy component, which can be kind of uh, strengthened. So, as you can see, in case of... Uh, uh, Bihar, and when, you, when we're talking about input indicators, you can see in terms of green budget, if you see the number below the last the last row, uh, but I'll just say that, you know, in for the financial year uh, 2020, uh, 2020 and 21, uh, the green budget was about five, uh, five thousand, about say, let's say 57,000 uh, crores, and uh, it increased to about 77,000 crores in one year. So you can understand that, you know, that states have been like sort of doing thinking, you know, and have been trying to kind of uh, improvise on this scheme. And that is not just to say that just because there is resource allocation, you're having the final outcome output, uh, I mean, uh, output as well as outcome. No, it's not to say that, but then also inputs are needed. And in the long term, you can also track on the actual impact. Now, coming to Puducherry and ways forward for Puducherry. Uh, so this is just, again, based on the review of documents that I could access on the website. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, one can see that, you know, a lot of the mandate uh, is also, and as was mentioned by the, by the Honorable Secretary, was uh, that, that, you know, Niti Aayog has uh, given some sort of indicator, uh, indicative framework to work on. So just so that, you know, for example, of course, um, you know, I just came across this particular uh, example and the time frame for the target. So, yes, initially, uh, Puducherry, whatever it has submitted, it was in broad bullets in the intervention area. And it is good that Puducherry is focusing on tree outside forest cover and uh, aims to <clears throat> increase the tree outside forest cover to 20% in uh, 2030. So now this is something which can be replicated for all other uh, targets or uh, all other targets as well as indicators as well. Uh, the other thing, which is not just the thing that this is not just uh, for do cherry, but also for other states, union territories, and also at the national level, is then when we do the mapping of SDG goals and schemes, and then you know accordingly have reporting. Uh, so they, there has to be a coherence and match between them. So, for example, you know, you could report on some of the output indicators of individual schemes. And so, you know, that they, that framework itself can be robust. So right now it just appears there are two documents. And this is, again, I'm not saying this is only for states, union territories, but also at the national level. But also for Puducherry, something, you know, if they want to think about it, there's a separate document for mapping of schemes and programs. And there's a separate document which has been developed for indicators. I think there has to be a coherence. And again, a framework of having... Uh, some sort of, uh, um, you know, maybe inputs is not possible, but at least to begin with some sort of physical targets of individual schemes, as well as, you know, at the target level, um, target level, if, it you know, we can develop something with, which has coherence with the national indicator framework and its state's own, own contextualization of that, that would be very useful. Then strengthening institutional mechanism, not just that we have a climate change cell, so whether you know, of course, one thing could be that you could have a climate change and SDG cell <coughs> within the existing setup, but then also that could be a separate SDG cell. Now, that's just something, but there has to be, this is absolutely key, like, you know, uh, in terms of institutional mechanism. And, uh, uh, you know, the mapping exercise itself can be strengthened. Uh, the other thing is that... Uh, Yes, reporting is extremely essential uh, from the document that, you know, I could access in, uh, you know, many indicators have not been reported on. And of course, you know, it's not to say that, you know, it's 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 an evolution, it's a evolving process. And so, you know, um, hopefully soon enough, uh, we can have that reporting because then that will inform development planning. And 
again like you know budgeting budget budgeting green budgeting process is a very 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 impactful means because you know then every department can visit, revisit their schemes as to how they can integrate and they'll be kind of nudge to do so because they have on an annual basis because again budget making is a very important annual exercise so again again this is just to sort of say that okay uh, like cherry would be happy to partner with puducherry whether it when it comes to sdg indicators reporting or even integrating sdgs in budgeting or as or preparing an sdg link budgeting process so that's all uh, i just like to end with this slide which is inspired uh, by uh, one of uh, gandhi's quote wherein like you see this is more like a cartoon that you know there's a person who's saying that okay great as gdp or even state gsdp is progressing very well and we're going in a good speed and then you know the whole thing that speed is irrelevant if you're going in the wrong direction and the right direction would be integrating sdgs and development planning so thank you with this i would like to end my presentation and thank you so much for being such a patient audience um thank you dr shaili kedia for this uh, excellent presentation uh, uh the presentation was uh, very informative and you have covered almost uh, all the aspects of sdgs and how it could be integrated into the uh, development planning of the union territory and also you mentioned about the green budgeting uh, which, which will be very useful for our union territory as well uh, and certainly we would uh, look forward to work with terry on these aspects also uh, now i would request the participants to uh, Uh, to come forward and uh, ask if they have any queries, you can come forward and ask. If anybody would like to have any queries or uh, any, please. Uh, Switch on your microphone and speak. I think there is no queries from the participants here. Eh? We have uh, been observing the uh, Anitya Yoga Index report. Uh, we find that in some places, like uh, the index values are not being properly uh, mentioned. Like there are certain errors actually from what we feel like. in the slide which uh, uh, dr uh, shelly showed there was a indicator called uh, uh, biomedical waste uh, um, treatment for which the target is 100% at national level but for pondicherry it is mentioned as 135 cannot be more than 100 so such uh, errors are there in uh, many for many indicators in the report uh, so how do we redress this like how should we address to uh, get all these things redress because like we find that uh, niti ayog is not consulting with the states on the values for those indicators they collect it from the various ministries data is available from the ministries or central agencies and also most of the data is our own data is like uh, in the 2021 uh, 20, uh, 2021 report we find that the reports of 18 uh, 2018 are given the values for 2018 are given Uh, due to some uh, difficulties faced by the uh, central agencies mm. how do we reduce these kind of issues i would like to add to this question what we would like to know is where the data is being collected from what is the source of the data and if there is something that we are not able to understand or think that like this 135 percentage how to get it corrected what is the methodology to get to whom to go and approach right Yes. So, uh, thank you so much for that question. So, yes, I mean, uh, at least in the slide which I gave, and, and, and like like you rightly, I've not changed any information. I've just put the information as it is was as as it was available from Niti Ayo website. But it does happen. Yes, as you can say that you know uh, from the biomedical waste in uh, waste data, uh, Puducherry is uh, short even more than hundred uh, percent. And I think like of course it is it is it is entirely possible to have that sort of a number when you're talking about budgeting because often under schemes you overspend the budget as to what was kind of allocated. But yes, for this kind of indicator, it should not be the case. I think you know there has to uh, firstly like um, again we are a federal country, 
so uh, I mean, one of the things is because it is of course taken from uh, national data sources but i'd like to add that uh, for example for waste related indicators a lot of the data is also collated in the national source from the state pollution control board you know so pccs and so they also have to you, you will have to like maybe also get into the depth of this particular indicator as to why is it overshooting it's of course reflects still good that you're over overperforming over but then it's not accurate you know it may not be accurate and it can be kind of addressed the uh, other thing is it's very important uh, again that's where the state indicator frameworks come in because a state indicator framework will give you uh, give you the uh, leverage to define your own uh, own uh, own uh, date own uh, uh, you know kind of uh, to to report on your own indicators and make sure that you you can you know you have it validated and then you know you have like a document that is validated completely with the state level actors the other aspect or other question that came was regard regarding the periodicity of data so there is some data which is in the 2021 niti aayog sdg index which was from earlier years in 2018 2017 now this issue will remain because there is not like for example a lot of data that is collected periodically or every year you know there is some data that is that is collected every day there is some data that is collected every quarter there is some data that is collected monthly basis there is some data that is collected annually basis something like population is kind of collected on a decadal basis so you know um, so again the way we understand uh, at the national level the reporting is that if the data is not available then they just take the latest data available and not to say that this is the ideal way ideal way is that and now that you know when we are talking about big data we are talking about artificial intelligence we do hope that data systems will evolve in such a way that the periodicity can be faster but then again uh, instead of not reporting anything i think still it's a better thing to report on what is available and keep on you know so let it serve as a reminder as this is where we kind of uh, stand but having said that i will agree that this is not a perfect uh, data set we have to work in terms of improvement improving designing new data collection system which collects data more more regularly and uh, and especially when it comes to environment data a lot of the data uh, even on waste management is not very regularly reported by municipalities so this is an issue the, the only thing is to collect data and report it uh, but for us for a for a uh, puducherry we would suggest that you must have your own on lines with sapc should have your indicator framework uh, your own own uh, uh, uh indicator framework document wherein you uh, can perhaps be a model state for you know uh, these issues so but just uh, yeah that would be my immediate response to all the questions that was posed is there any other questions from the participants okay then uh, i think uh, we have come to the end of the sessions for uh, today's of today's webinar uh, i take this opportunity to thank our uh, secretary uh, smita madam for being here and always encouraging us to conduct these kind of uh, uh, training awareness and capacity building programs she is a great support for our puchery climate change cell thank you ma'am for being here and uh, i thank dr shaili kedia for immediately accepting uh, um, this uh, our uh, offer to uh, give a talk today on this uh, topic of sdgs um, it was a very short notice and she had immediately accepted and uh, she's here with us and we had a wonderful session with uh, dr shaili kedia thank you so much for being here and i thank our uh, senior scientific officer dr sagar alfred uh, uh, who has joined us today for this uh, webinar and he is also another uh, pillar of support for puchey climate change so like thank you sir and i thank all the officials of my department who are uh, uh, constantly supporting us in all our endeavors uh, and i thank the participants who are here from various departments academic institutes uh, civil society <laughs> and all the participants who are here for this webinar thank you all so much uh, thank you so we'll end the session here kala uh, ma'am can i come in i had some uh, network issues please sir Uh, sir, certain certain observation good afternoon good uh, afternoon to secretary uh, madam uh, as well as to my all colleagues uh, 
and uh, i was there uh, thanks dr kedia also for the presentation uh, it is uh, nicely going on and then a very uh, in an organized manner this series of the webinar is being organized but just to way forward i would like to add uh, as uh, dr kedia told uh, you know identification of state level indicator framework uh, for each department is the next way for example let us say water supply department and the next comes the energy and the municipal corporation consumption so these kind of uh, sector wise uh, state level indicators and local level indicators need to be identified and uh, then uh, the individual departments with the terry and the climate change cell should sit together and then identify and finalize the framework otherwise it would be beyond a point it would be very difficult to measure unless otherwise you identify and then finalize the framework it would be difficult to measure and then then comes the reporting so i think uh, this can be added as in the way forward i had put this uh, as a comment uh, to you in the whatsapp so you can take that and then you can try to incorporate and then uh, consider that to go forward on this so much sir uh, that was uh, dr dwaraka nath uh, he was our uh, previous director in the department of science technology and environment uh, thank you sir for joining us and uh, giving the valuable suggestions thank you thank you so much uh, for your question i completely agree because the first step is getting the framework right and rightly so the the exercise is called either national indicator framework or a state indicator framework so having a like a framework means you also have a lot of flexibility not at this stage but also to make changes at a later stage so i think uh, that's very important and i also like to say that i'll uh, i'll i'll I'll, uh, i'll share this presentation with uh, uh with uh, kala megam ji and you know he can circulate it to participants who ever are interested and uh, also you know we'd be absolutely keen to uh, you know work with puducherry on even sdgs and look forward to uh, you know any opportunities on this thank you so much thank you thank you thank you everybody bye thank you thank you so much